Welcome to today's lesson. We're on Unit 6, Lines and Planes, and Lesson 4, which we're going to look at intersections of planes. In the previous lesson, we looked at uh, intersections of lines and planes, and today it'll just be planes. So first, what we're going to look at is the first scenario in which we have um, intersections of just two planes. In case we have three possibilities for the intersections of two planes, uh, first is that if the planes intersect in a line, okay, so we'll note that there are an infinite number of solutions. Number two, if the planes are coincident, so basically they lay on top of each other or are basically the same plane, uh, then there are an infinite number of solutions as well. Our third situation is if the planes are parallel and distinct, okay, so they will never pass through each other, uh, then there is no solution. So let's take a look at how we can solve a problem uh, that involves intersections of two planes. So in example number one, we're going to describe how the planes in each pair intersect. So first, let's take a look at A. OK, so let's look at these two planes. Uh, now, the first thing that we should do is eliminate the situation in which the two planes are actually parallel. OK, so if I want to just do a quick sketch here, there's my um, actually, I want to create a plane. Okay, so here's my plane right there. There's my plane. And we'll note that if I had a normal, okay, so the normal would be right here. Okay, so an N right there. If I had another plane, okay, what I can conclude is that if the two normals are parallel, and that means the planes are parallel, correct? Okay, so let's let's test the the, the normals of the two um, of the two planes. So what we can say is n one. Remember that the coefficients of of the variables are then just the coordinates of our normal. Okay, so n two. So this is probably the easiest way to first check if we have parallel lines or parallel planes. Okay, and if we look at them, no, they're not parallel because we can see that they are not linear combinations of each other. Okay, so that means that the, uh, the planes are not parallel, so not parallel. Okay. Okay, so now what we can do uh, is use elimination in order to figure out the other two cases in which uh, does the, the planes lie on top of each other. Okay or do they intersect in a line? So writing these two equations out, let's use elimination. Um, we're going to write these as two simultaneous equations of 2x minus y plus z minus 1 is equal to 0, and that'll be equation 1. y plus z minus 6 is equal to 0, that's equation number 2. Okay. Okay, so by process of elimination, I think it would be the easiest if we actually subtract the z's. So um, 1 minus 2, then, is just x and minus 2y and plus 5 is equal to 0. Okay? So what we're going to do now, okay, so that's still two variables that we have here. So what we have to do is we have to assign one of the variables to be the parameter. Okay, so what we're going to say is let, which one do we like? Let's just take y is equal to t. Okay, so then equation number three, okay, if we take this one, the one that we had solved for or eliminated for, x then, I'm going to move everything over so I have uh, x on one side will be negative 5 plus 2t, okay? Then finally, we can plug it back into, let's plug it back into, let's see, this one, number 2, both y and x, okay? So we can say that x is minus 5 plus 2t plus t plus z. And I'm going to go ahead and even move over the 6, okay, because I'm going to eventually isolate for z anyway. So z then, so that would be 3, is 
then now moving this over, so the 11 minus 3t. Okay, so now writing the parametric equation, writing our parametric equation. x is equal to negative 5 plus 2t, y is equal to t, z is equal to 11 minus 3t. Okay? Okay, so the vector equation form, vector equation then is equal to x, y, z. Okay, so the intersection of the two planes, they intersect at a line. As we can see here, they would intersect at a line, and it is uh, two distinct planes. So if you were to write a statement, okay, we would say that they intersect at um, a line, at a line, okay. Okay, and this would be our equation of intersection. Okay, so there's our line equation. Now, if we got, we had an intersection that uh, didn't work out and they were um, two planes that were not distinct, that were parallel and not distinct, uh, then in this case up here, we would have one of these equations not work out, okay? So something would cancel out or you'd get an unusual number such as like 13 is equal to zero or um, let's say the parameters canceling out. And we're going to look at an, a situation where that does happen uh, and I think we'll go on to part B now. So looking at part B, we have these two planes and let's first eliminate the case in which the two planes are parallel. Okay, so we're going to examine their normals. Okay, remember that the coefficients in front, or sorry, yeah, the coefficients in front of the variable correspond to the coordinates of the normal. Okay, so this is n1 and n2. So looking at this, we can see that is there a number k in which we can multiply, say, n1 to get n2? And in this case, if you if you really examine it, there is. Okay. Um, at first, it might look like no, but however, it's because the, the number that we're actually multiplying n and 1 by is actually not a whole number. Okay. So in this case, n2 is equal to 1.5 n1. Okay. I hope you spotted that, but maybe test out a couple of numbers um, and see if that works out, because it might not always be a whole number. Okay, so that means that the the two planes are parallel, okay? They're parallel, however, are they parallel and distinct or coincident? Okay, are they parallel and distinct or coincident? Meaning, are they parallel and will never touch and pass through each other? Or do they lay on top of each other? I can't really draw it that well. <laughs> there we go. Or they lay on top of each other. Okay, so let's, um, through the same process as before, test out these two planes. And we'll use elimination again. Okay, so remember, if they are coincident, then there is an infinite number of solutions. If they are parallel and distinct, there are no solutions. Okay, so let's see what we get. So 3x minus 9y plus 
z minus 2. Okay, so equation 1, equation 2. So what we can do here is I'm going to eliminate, you see here, I'm going to eliminate the, the x's. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this one by 3 and multiply this by 2. Okay, uh, so here what we have is 3 of the ones, and you can do this in steps if you want to rewrite it again, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to do it all in one, one go, that's okay. So in this case, it's 6 minus 6x, we're going to get 0. 18, negative 18 minus negative 18 is again 0, 0x zero is 0y's, zero and then so we have here is 12 and 12, so 0z, and then we'll have 21, negative 4, negative 17 is equal to 0. Okay, so negative, I'm just going to rewrite this, negative 17 is equal to 0. Interesting. So what we have here is there is no solution, okay? So no solution. So what exactly would it look like if we had infinite number of solutions? Okay, so this in this case here, this is impossible, so we have no solutions. But if you had something that was that would cancel out, so everything cancels out, so you've got zero, um, y, and then zero, z is equal to, say, let's do this a little bit neater. Let's just say zero is equal to zero. If you got zero is equal to zero, zero y, zero z, zero um, x is, is equal to zero, then it would be infinite. But in this situation, we have something that can't exist. Like we can't say negative 17 is equal to zero. Okay, that's impossible. So that's why it's no solution. Therefore, the planes are parallel and distinct. Okay, so now what we're going to take a look at is if we had three planes and how would they intersect. So we have three cases for that. So the first is that the planes intersect at a point. So there's exactly one solution. So the one solution will be a point, okay? And in this case, the normals are not parallel and they're not coplanar, okay? So coplanar means that they all lie on the same plane. So if you had, uh, if you could picture yourself with three lines and they all lie on the same plane, plane or a piece of paper, if you were to lay a piece of a straw all on one piece of paper, that's what coplanarity means, okay? The second case is that the, the planes actually intersect at a line, okay? Uh, and in this case, the planes are, the normals are coplanar, but not parallel. Okay? In the last case, of course, is if the planes are coincident. So there's an infinite number of solutions and the normals are all parallel. Okay, so let's take a look at an example and see how we can apply that knowledge. Okay, so for example number two, for each set of planes, and I've narrowed it down to one, because <laughs> these questions are quite long, uh, describe the number of solutions and how the planes intersect. So here we have three planes. Okay, so let's first course, let's take a look at their normals. So here I have written out their normals. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to examine them. So is any of them a linear combination? Perhaps there's two out of the three or maybe all three. Okay, so in observing these, we can say that none of them are parallel. So no, so none of the normals. So say none are parallel. It's not proper terms, proper English, but anyway, we're in math class. Uh, none are parallel, okay? So none of the planes, no planes are parallel. No planes. No planes are parallel. I think it just went from bad to worse. Anyway, uh, you get the idea. 
Okay, so let's check to see if the normals are coplanar. So we're going to use the triple scalar product in order to verify this. And just when you thought you'd never have to see this again, uh, here it is. Okay, so basically, if you have these two, okay, we know that they're not parallel, okay, because we've checked that. Um, so if we know that these two are not parallel, okay, they're going to form a plane. And if we cross it with a third and it equals zero, okay, remember the property across product is sine theta, okay? So if it's not, if it's equal to zero, then it's coplanar. But if it's not equal to zero, then it's not coplanar. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. We'll put some numbers in. So in this case, it's two, one, and six. We'll dot that with n2, which is 3, 4, and 3, okay, and cross it with the third, which is 1, negative 2, and negative 4, okay? So just a little side note here, I'm, I'm going to actually do the cross product over here, okay? So we'll say 3, 4, 3, 3, 4, 3, 1, negative 2, negative 4, 1, negative 2, negative 4. Okay. Cancel off the ends there. And we're going to draw our lines. Okay, and this way. Okay, just to save a little bit of time, I came up with the answer, okay, right here. Okay, so now we can go over here, and we have 2, 1, 6. We're going to dot that with our other vector here that we came up with. So that gives us negative 20 plus 15, and that is minus... 65 or 60, sorry, jumping ahead actually to the answer. And 65. Our triple scalar product then is negative 65. Okay, and going back up here, that means it's not equal to zero, so it's not coplanar. Go back up. So I just want to bring you back to this slide. Okay, so we have the case where. Uh, the normals are not normal, or are not parallel, and they are not coplanar. Okay, so that means that we're probably going to find, once we actually start to solve our equations, um, that we're going to actually come up with a single point. Okay. Okay, so let's just choose the first two uh, planes. Uh, so what we can do now is we'll say that, uh, so two x plus 4y, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, plus 6z is then equal to, okay, so I just went ahead and wrote those down so you don't have to wait for me to click back and forth. Okay, so what we can do now is I would eliminate the y's because then I can just multiply everything here by, um, by 4, so we'll go 1 and 2. Okay, I'll rewrite them again so that, that way we don't get confused. So this is number 1, so 4, 1. Okay, so that will give us 8x plus 4y plus 24z is equal to 28. Okay, so now I'm going to subtract these two equations. So we'll say... Uh, I'm going to subtract this one from that one. So one, so four ones minus two because these numbers are bigger. Okay, so it eliminates a lot of the negative signs. Uh, so that will give us five x. Okay, and the y's are eliminated, and then we have plus twenty one z is then equal to so twenty eight minus, that should be a negative, minus negative 8, and that's 36, okay? So I just went ahead and wrote that at the top of this page. 
Now let's go back again and we'll write, um, we'll look at the other, another pair. Okay, so let's examine plane number one, okay, and plane number three. I guess we'll call that one and three. So in this case, I would probably, it wouldn't even matter which one you want to eliminate. Let's eliminate the y's because then we can just add them together. Okay, so we're going to multiply number one by two. So 4x plus 2y plus 12z uh, is equal to 14. Okay, uh, and now what we can do is we can add them. So over here, I'm going to say 1 times 2 plus 3. Okay, so you can add them together by saying, so it's one, this one and this one, so 5x. The y's are eliminated. We get plus 8z is equal to 23. Okay, so now let's take, we'll say, we'll call this 4, and we'll call this 5. Okay. Let's take 4 and 5 and work with those. I'm going to rewrite this down here. We'll take 4 and put it here is equal to 36. So I can subtract them. I'm going to subtract. This is 4. So 4 from 5, just because the math works out a little bit better. These two will be eliminated. Okay, and then we're left with 13. Z is equal to 13. Okay, so Z then is equal to 1. Okay. So now we can take Z and plug it back into, I would even plug it back into 4. So plugging back into 4, we're going to get 5X plus 21 is equal to 36. X is then equal to 3. Okay, so there's Z. There's x, okay, taking that, and we'll plug that back into, let's see, we can plug that back into, and then just notice up here I dropped a z. Well, let's plug it back into 3, sure. Number 3, in order to get y, ah, yeah, let's, let's just do that one because I've already picked it. So 3 minus 2y minus 4z times 1 is equal to 9. Okay, so I have 3 minus 4 minus 9 is equal to 2y. So minus 10 is equal to 2y, then y is equal to negative 5. Okay, so there's our point. So the point of intersection is 3, negative 5, and 1, okay? And, and that would be the answer to this question. And yes, they are quite long. So remember when you're trying to answer questions relating to planes uh, and their intersections, okay? Uh, if you were asked to actually just describe how they intersect, you can simply just take their normals and, and um, check to see if they're parallel. So first I would check to see if the play, the, uh, the normals are parallel. Then you can eliminate this one, okay? After that, check to see if the planes are then coplanar. And then you can narrow it down to one of these two, whether it's a point of intersection or a line of intersection. If the question then goes further and asks you to find either the line uh, or the, sorry, the point of intersection or the equation of the line of intersection, then you will need to do more work. However, it probably would be sufficient if you were to just describe uh, how they intersect to just examine their normals. Okay, so, well, that concludes today's lesson, okay, and uh, I guess we'll see you next time. Uh